Hi, my name is Florian Fischer, and today I will talk about how we can better understand interaction with computers from an optimal feedback control perspective. Whether we point with a mouse, scroll through an article, or play a VR game, almost every interaction technique is based on human body movement. Given this substantial role, we should aim for a better understanding of how movement in interaction is generated. To this end, we propose to view the user and the computer as a single dynamical system. We further assume that the user aims to control this joint human-computer system optimally. Under these assumptions, we propose that we can understand interaction from an optimal feedback control perspective. The idea is as follows. The human computer system dynamics F describe how the user's body reacts to muscle control signals, how input devices react to movements of the user, and how the interface reacts to input device signals. Crucially, we cannot teleport the input device from one position to another, but need to activate muscles that build up force to accelerate and decelerate the input device. To account for these constraints, we propose to describe interaction as a dynamical system, which determines how movement affects the physical and virtual objects the user is interacting with. In our example, the world state X encompasses not only the cursor position, but also the velocity vector of the input device and the state of the user's body, such as muscle activation and excitation. However, you can include in the state X any quantities you're interested in. To describe how users intentionally generate movement in interaction, we add a second part, the human controller. This can be seen as a simplified model of the cognitive and perceptual processes involved during interaction. So first, the human controller selects a muscle control signal U that activates the muscles. The dynamical system then describes how the state X changes over time. Next, the user receives perceptual feedback Y about the current world state X. In our example, this includes visual observations of the cursor position as shown on the display, the velocity of the input device, and the muscle activations. The result is a closed-loop model of interaction, in which the controller can partially observe the effects of its previous controls and adjust the next controls accordingly. The main question is, how do users select these controls? We assume that humans behave rationally. That means they aim to minimize and internalize cost function J. Costs may arise when the user fails to complete a given task, but can also be used to incentivize faster, smoother, or more comfortable movements. So in other words, the cost function describes the trade-off between different subjective goals that users face during interaction. Since some of these goals are task-specific, the cost function J needs to depend on the considered interaction task. This cost function is minimized with respect to the constraints imposed by the human computer system dynamics. That is, we use the dynamics F to predict how muscle controls U change the world state X on which the costs J might depend. Conceptually, this requires access of the human controller to an internal model of the system dynamics, which in general can be inaccurate or incorrect. The optimal control problem can be solved once in advance, resulting in a control strategy pi that maps an arbitrary state x to the corresponding optimal control u. And this strategy can be used for forward simulations as follows. Given a muscle control u, the state of the body, the input device, and the interface is updated. Partial information on these states is obtained as feedback. This perceptual feedback is compared to the feedback expected from the internal model, which allows to form an own estimate x hat of the true but unknown state x. The control strategy then provides the next optimal muscle control u, which again affects the system state, and so on. So in summary, we model human interaction as a solution to a task-specific optimal control problem. Given the infinite number of possible muscle control signals that humans can apply at every single time step, and given that only a small subset of these controls leads to reasonable body movements, solving this problem is very hard in general. However, for a particular subset of optimal control problems, a unique solution exists, which can be computed analytically. These are the optimal control problems with linear dynamics, quadratic costs, and Gaussian noise, which can be solved using the linear quadratic Gaussian regulator. 
In our paper, we show that this framework is capable of predicting one-dimensional mouse cursor trajectories. As mouse pointing requires only small movements, following the principle of small signals, we can linearize the nonlinearities that occur during interaction. For our model of mouse pointing, we use linear dynamics of fourth order. This means that the control does not directly affect the cursor position or velocity, as would be the case for first or second order dynamics, but instead the user has to select muscle control signals. A simplified muscle model is used to generate acceleration from these signals, which is then integrated to obtain the cursor position. These dynamics can be regarded as end-to-end -end interaction dynamics in the sense that they model the direct effect of muscle control on the virtual mouse cursor. Our cost function consists of two parts. To ensure accuracy and stability, we penalize the remaining distance to target as well as velocity and acceleration when the target is reached. As a regu regularization term, we add effort costs that penalize large muscle control signals at every time step. All these cost terms are squared to obtain a quadratic cost function. Finally, it is well known from human motor control that humans cannot control their muscles exactly, but movement is always subject to signal-dependent motor noise. In the past, this has been suggested as a possible explanation for the speed accuracy trade-off. We account for this by adding signal-dependent Gaussian noise to the muscle controls. Similarly, humans cannot observe the true state X perfectly, but perceptions are also subject to Gaussian noise. To evaluate the quality of the predicted movements, we compared them to real mouse cursor trajectories from the pointing dynamics dataset. Our quantitative analysis showed that LQG and ELQG, an extension including eye arcades and a more sophisticated perception model, significantly outperformed the remaining models in terms of positional error. In addition, our framework provides further insight into the effects of the model parameters. For example, we can quantify the speed accuracy trade-off by comparing the endpoint accuracy for different distances and movement durations. We can also predict how the user's internal estimate of the current target position changes over time and how this affects the cursor movement. Thus, our simulation-based approach allows not only to simulate interactive motion, but it also provides explanations of how and why movements are generated. In summary, we have introduced optimal feedback control for simulating and understanding movement in interaction. Using a simple linear quadratic model with Gaussian noise, we have demonstrated the capability of optimal feedback control to predict mouse pointing. As a proposed framework also applies to other movement-based interaction methods, future work should focus on more complex interaction techniques and more diverse user models. Finally, optimal feedback control could aid in the optimization of interaction techniques and the simulation-based testing of prototypes. So thank you for your attention, and if you're curious now about applying the presented optimal feedback control methods, you can try out our Python toolkit, which is available at the link shown.